Well, good morning, everybody, and welcome back to Kid Nation Online, our way here at Plymouth Covenant Church of sharing God's Bible stories with you while you're at home. Glad to have you here. As I said, welcome, everybody. We're glad to have you here. Hope you've had a great week this week. Uh, for those of you that are homeschooling and this is a new thing, hope you're doing all right. For those of you that are used to this, nothing's changed. Anyway, first thing we ask is, did anybody in this viewing audience have a birthday? You, yourself, not your dog, cat, sister, brother, best friend, next door neighbor, the lady that takes your milk money at school, because you're not going to school, so that's not happening. The guy that mows your yards, probably nobody's mowing the yards because it's a little bit early to mow yards, but if you're mowing yards, or if somebody is mowing your yard, not them. We're talking about you, just you. Did you have a birthday in the last week or so? If you did, Happy birthday. We're glad to have you part of Kid Nation today. And we want you to know that once we get back in the church, we will do the birthday songs for everybody that had birthdays. We will have the cha-chas, we will have the birthday song, we will have everything. So, look forward to having you all back together here at church at some point in the future. Now it's time for our Wacky Holiday. Every week in Kid Nation, we celebrate a Wacky Holiday. Now this can be a real holiday, it can be a made-up holiday, it can be almost any kind of holiday. Particular ones that have been popular are food holidays. Chocolate chip cookies is a big deal. We do have that issue with the whole mint chocolate chip cookies, which we know are horrible. There are some people out there that like them, but I am one of those rare people that I like mint. I like chocolate, but I don't like the two together. So if you like mint chocolate cookies, that's great. I don't. Anyway, today's wacky holiday is Bat Appreciation Day. On Bat Appreciation Day, take a moment to consider the humble bat. Bats are mysterious creatures which are all around us, though we may not be aware of them. Some species are small as your thumb and yet are capable of flying hundreds of miles over land and sea to migrate each year. Bats navigate the dark areas they live in by using echolocation, and they're also responsible for keeping many pests at bay, including mosquitoes. It's about that time again. So, on Bat Appreciation Day, why not take the time to learn more about these amazing creatures? Many zoos features a nocturnal house, and they have online videos that you can watch to see bats up close and personal. So it's also a great excuse for a family day out at the zoo once they open up. So. Keep that in mind, especially when you see those mosquitoes. Wonder why there's not more bats. Anyway, it is time to grab a Bible. If you have trouble reading or if you just want some help, grab mom, dad, brother, sister, grandma, grandpa, somebody. Go grab your Bible and come back and have a seat and get ready to look up our verses. And remember, if you don't have a Bible, reach out to Pastor Sarah at Plymouth Covenant Church and she will make sure you have one for your Kid Nation services, for you, and for your home. All right. Let's go through our books of the Bible real quickly just to make sure we're starting to learn those. These are the books of the New Testament. Here we go. Say them out loud with me, too. I want, to, I want you saying them out loud at home. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts, Romans, 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians, Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, 1 Thessalonians, 2 Thessalonians, 1 Timothy, 2 Timothy, Titus, Philemon, Hebrews, James, 1 Peter, 2 Peter, 1 John, 2 John, 3 John, Jude, and the last book of the Bible, Revelation. All right. Keep those in mind. Those will help us as we're looking up our verses today. Two verses are out of the New Testament. One is out of the Old Testament. Let's start with it. Grab your Bibles, open it up to about the middle, and look for Psalm 130, verse 4. So Psalm chapter 130, verse 4. If you need to pause the video while you look it up, that's cool. You do that, I'll look it up, and then we'll get ready to read it. Here we go. Psalm 134. But with you there is forgiveness, therefore you are feared. 
but with you there is forgiveness, therefore you are feared. Now yours may sound a little different if you have a different translation. I'm reading from the NIV Bible. If you're reading from the King James Bible or one of the other translations, yours may sound a little different. Let's get ready to look up our second verse. Luke 17, 4. Take some time, look that up. I have mine. I think I have it too. There we go. All right, let's get ready to read it together. If he sins against you seven times in a day and seven times comes back to you and says, I repent, forgive him. Now, if you have a Bible that, that happens to be in red print, that's because these are words that Jesus said. So, let's read that again. If he sins against you seven times in a day, and seven times comes back to you and says, I repent, forgive him. Let's go to our last verse now, Acts 10, 43. Acts 10, 43. Again, pause this if you need to take time to look it up. Here we go. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. Who are we talking about there? That's right, we're talking about Jesus. Let's pray real quick. Father God, we thank you for this day that we can gather together in our homes and here at church and we can learn about you. We can hear your stories. We can laugh. We can joke about our wacky holidays. But we understand that we're here to learn about you. And Father, we ask you to help us. Sit beside us. Guide us. Help us to understand what the story is meant to tell us. It may not be that we understand it today. It may be we don't understand it for years. But for now, Father, we ask you to help us to understand it in the way that we can. We ask this in Jesus' precious name, and all God's children said, Amen. Before we start our lesson today, let's ask this question of ourselves. Have you ever been forgiven for something you shouldn't have done? Now think about that. We all do things we shouldn't do. But think about a time where you were forgiven for something you shouldn't, done, shouldn't have done. And keep that in mind, because that's what our lesson's partially about today. Today's lesson is, I am the light of the world. Let's get into it. Today we're going to learn more about Jesus' love and grace by hearing another story from the Bible. It's from the book of John, chapter 8. Now, this takes place before Jesus was crucified and resurrected. So this is before then. So we kind of jump back so we can tell these stories about Jesus and some of the things that he wants us to know. Now Jesus had been staying on the Mount of Olives, and early in the morning he traveled to the temple in Jerusalem. Now this was before his, that last week. We, you know, we did the lessons on Holy Week. This is before that. A crowd soon gathered and Jesus started teaching them. That's the way it used to work. Jesus would show up someplace, people would gather, and he would just teach. The Jewish leaders and Pharisees had been trying to trap Jesus into saying something they could use against him. Does anyone remember why the Jewish le leaders didn't like Jesus? It's because Jesus was telling a different message than they had been sharing with all the Jewish people. Jesus' message was based on love, which was not based on rules like their lessons were. So they didn't like Jesus. Jesus was messing things up for them. So they grabbed a woman who had been caught in sin and dragged her before Jesus in the crowd he was teaching. And they said, Teacher, this woman was caught in the very act of sin. According to Moses' law, it says she should be stoned to death. What do you say about this? 
See, their rules were based in Moses' laws, the laws that God gave to Moses on Mount Sinai. And Jesus is coming along and saying, there's new rules. And these rules are based on love for each other and God's love for us. So they're trying to trick Jesus to get him to go against Moses' law. So here's what Jesus did. He bent down and he started to write on the ground with his finger. Just do 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 draw it on the dirt. When they kept asking him questions, Teacher, what are you going to do? What do you think you should do, teacher? He straightened up and said, Let any one of you who is without sin be the first to throw a stone at her. Then he stooped back down and he wrote on the ground some more. Now the Jewish leaders and the Pharisees wondered what to do. They tried to trick Jesus, but he turned the tables on them and said, whoever's without sin, go ahead and throw the first stone. As they thought about it, they realized that none of them were without sin. Then one by one, the Jewish leaders and Pharisees started to leave. The oldest ones left first. The younger men accusing the woman started leaving until they were all gone. Eventually, only the woman was left standing there before the crowd, and Jesus stood up and said to her, Woman, where are they? Has no one condemned you? No one, sir, she said. Then neither do I condemn you, Jesus declared. Go now and leave your life of sin. Now listen to what Jesus said. Leave your life of sin. He didn't say he forgave her. But he did say, live differently now. Leave your life of sin behind. Then when Jesus spoke again to the people, he said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Now the Pharisees, and there were still some in the crowd, challenged him. Here you are, appearing as your own witness. Your testimony is not valid. Now this is one of the rules they had, that you couldn't testify by yourself. So Jesus answered, Even if I testify on my own behalf, my testimony is valid, for I know where I come from and where I am going. But you have no idea where I come from or where I am going. You judge by human standards. I pass judgment on no one. Jesus said he wasn't here to judge us. He wasn't here to condemn us. He further said, but if I do judge, my decisions are true. Because I am not alone. I stand with the Father who sent me. In your own law, it is written that the testimony of two witnesses is true. I am one who testifies for myself. My other witness is the Father who sent me. He's talking about God. Then they asked him, Where is your Father? We don't see you standing with anybody else. You're alone. And Jesus answered them, You do not know me or my Father. Jesus replied, If you knew me, you would know my Father also. He's telling them, you don't recognize who I am. Remember, we've talked about this in the past. A lot of people didn't understand who Jesus was. They thought he was a teacher. They thought he was a prophet. They thought he was a really good guy. But it took a while for them to figure out he was God's Son sent here to earth. So think about that as you go through your week. Think about not judging other people. Think about loving people and forgiving them the way Jesus does. Because in this time where we're stuck in our homes and we're not able to get out and about, we get on each other's nerves. If we have brothers and sisters or even moms and dads, they, they, they get upset, they get angry, they get frustrated. And we have to be willing to be just like Jesus and forgive them too. So let's pray. 
Father God, we thank you for this day that you've blessed us with. And Father, we thank you for the story of Jesus, the story of his testimony and his statements that he is the light of the world. Father, we ask you to let that light shine on us. We ask you to let us accept that light into our hearts. Father, we ask you to be with us this week and weeks to come until things are back to more normal. Father, we ask you to help us to be forgiving, forgiving of others, forgiving of ourselves. And Father, we ask that you have others forgive us because we know we're not perfect. We ask all this in Jesus' most precious name and all God's children said, Amen. Well, thanks everybody for joining us today. Hope to see you back next week at Kid Nation and hopefully we'll be back here at Plymouth Covenant Church soon. You all take care.